dad Maker of the universe The massive and minute Your exquisite craft of love Brother Jesus Melting our hearts with your love Through word and sign and deed Your resurrection spilling out Loving spirit Lavish wisdom on display Her breath and life we share With beast and water leaf and light From the depths of who you are In oneness In threeness From the depths of who you are For you are goodness Trust and love Heavenly Dad Maker of the universe The massive and minute By your exquisite craft of love Brother Jesus, melting our hearts with your love Through word and sign and deed, your resurrection spilling out Loving spirit, lavish wisdom on display Her breath and life we share with beast and water, leaf and light From the depth of who you are In oneness, in threeness From the depth Good morning and welcome to our service today. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be continuing our series on the Kingdom of God and Morris will be sharing with us in the message today. It's been quite an exciting week, hasn't it? All the students are back at school. Congratulations, all the kids and parents and teachers that you're now back learning and on campus and that's such great news for you. I've heard from a number of uh, parents uh, that there was much joy from the kids and I'm sure from the mums and dads uh, that you're now back at school and uh, that you've returned. I hope you were excited to see your friends and hopefully you're excited to see your teachers as well. For others, we continue to wait, hope and pray. Uh, and our prayer is today that your soul will be nourished and fed and that you continue to hope in our Lord. So let's start our service today with this reminder from Psalm 62 verses 5 and 8. Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. 
He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honour depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times. You people, pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Amen. You know, whilst we haven't been able to meet together, we have missed so many birthdays and celebrations. This week, there are a few from our community that are celebrating significant birthdays. And you perhaps may know who these people are. So we want to wish them a huge happy birthday and to others that we've missed along the way when we haven't been able to get together. We also want to say thank you to these birthday people who have been part of our faith community and thank you for sharing in the journey with us. We do appreciate you and we praise God for you and for the many years you are now celebrating. And so a little message from some of us here on the team at TLC. Yep. now to join with us in the sharing of communion. So pause this video now and go and gather the elements that you would like to use. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks and offered it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Let's pray. Lord, we pray that you would still our minds and hearts as we take communion today. We ask that you would draw each of us into ever closer fellowship with yourself as we take of the bread and of the wine. We gratefully remember all that you did for us on the cross and we praise and glorify your holy name. Amen. Oh 
And in that region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You shall find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Almighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace.
morning folks how are you doing i guess like me your mind is not too far away this morning from the expectation of significant easing out of 100 days of restrictions and lockdowns as fellow melbournians congratulations and thanks for all your efforts in helping us all of us and uh long-suffering and dedicated health workers to be safe. We've actually rediscovered our common humanity, our made in the image of Godness, as we've reassumed the glorious responsibility of being our sisters and brothers keepers. What an amazing way to redefine the year of COVID. I have spoken with, smiled at, said hello to, exchanged encouragement and motivation with more people that I don't know, total strangers. As I've been out walking or calling into my local cafes and being greeted as a long lost friend. It's so special. We've all recovered what I call that central pursuit, the great human project. And interestingly, this is quite a relevant thing when considering our topic for today, the third message in the series, The Kingdom of God. What an amazing enterprise, the enterprise of our life, the only game in town, the enterprise of the rule and reign of God in time, history, eternity, the cosmos, society and community. This great and moving saga that is taking us and everything around us to that great rendezvous when every tribe and nation and people and language, every principality and power, every lamb, every lion, every child will be rearranged into their proper place of relationship with God, with each other, and with the creation. The prospect is exciting. It's electrifying. This is the one enterprise that commands our minds, our hearts, our talents, our passion, our agendas, and our very lives. It might sound like wishful thinking or empty poetry, but this vision is not just pregnant with possibility. It is the fervent prayer and commitment of Jesus, our Lord and our King. Listen, this is what he said. This is how you should pray. Our father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. This is not poetry, it is prayer. It represents serious intent. This is the heart of Jesus. This is his purpose. Prayer expresses inner purpose, passion. So we know from this prayer what the business is and hence what our business should be to get with the program, to hitch our energies, our ambitions, our actions and our lives to it, to the enterprise, the kingdom enterprise. We need to embrace the invitation to build the kingdom of God on earth with God, with our King Jesus, as it is in heaven. And Jesus gave notice of intent of his intention in his very first statement of ministry in Nazareth. Do you remember? The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom from prison for prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of Jubilee, the year of the Lord's favour. That great festival of equalisation, 
where we all start again under God and have the opportunity to rebuild after a life of probably misfortune. He indicated that his coming and his ministry was to establish a kingdom, a way of ruling where the values would be fundamentally different to what might be considered the norm, an upside down kingdom, as Pete Smith referred to last week, where, where the poor will have good news preached to them, where women and children will have a place of value and honor, where the blind will see, the deaf hear, where the rich will be sent away empty handed and the hungry will be filled with good things, where the last will be first and the greatest will be the humblest servant, where the meek, not the powerful, will inherit the earth, where the king shall seek out and save the lost, will reach out to lepers, untouchables, Samaritans, society's outcasts, and elsewhere in the scriptures, there are powerful pictures of the kingdom, pictures that are radical, revolutionary. He shall judge many peoples and shall arbitrate between strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall there be war any more and a little child will lead is this crazy delusional or the vision and manifesto of the kingdom of god these are the ipsissima verba latin sorry the very words of jesus and the scriptures in context as the program the values and the consequences of the kingdom of God are displayed. One thing is certain, Jesus of Nazareth came to rearrange things. After his brief stay on this planet, nothing would ever be the same again. His kingdom involved and involves massive rearrangement of relationships, reality, power, authority, values and expectations. The kingdom, he said, is within you. The kingdom is among you. But the kingdom is also exercised in creation, in the cosmos, in history, in time, in timelessness, in the realm of eternity. The kingdom will be established over all things, visible and invisible, as the Apostle Paul stated in Colossians 1 over all created things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, thrones, dominions, powers, principalities, rulers, authorities. The kingdom is awesome, unimaginable in scope, vast, incredible, incomparable. And we're invited to participate in this program. Amazing. We're invited to participate in this program on earth as it is in heaven. What an act of grace and generosity from Almighty God. We are the most privileged people on earth to participate in this divine program. Jesus was and is a different king, an altogether different ruler who made treatment of the poor, the hungry, the stranger, the prisoner, a measuring stick of faithfulness to our discipleship. Remember Matthew 24, 25 rather? Lord, when did we see you hungry, thirsty? When did we see you hungry and give you food, thirsty and give you something to drink, in prison and visit you, sick and care for you, a stranger and welcome you, in as much, he said, in as much as you did it to the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. That's the measure of our discipleship. Jesus is the cosmic redeemer, the great social rearranger, the one who turns the world upside down, liberator of the poor, leveler of the high ground, the one who fills valleys and smooths the rough places and thus builds a new landscape called the kingdom of God in which all of God's creatures, 
may live in peace and harmony with justice in a reconciled creation. Wow, what a picture, what a program, what a rule, and what a ruler, what a God. When you can't say it in any other way, you say it in song. So I'm going to take you on a little trip down memory lane. It was 24 years ago, and through the agency of over 100 community members, we filled the Karalika Theatre in Ringwood, two nights running, 500 people every night. We filled the theatre to share our message of the kingdom within the wider community. Watch. Messiah has come and things will never be the same again. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain leveled. The rough places will be made smooth and the new landscape called the Kingdom of God will be established. Here the poor will have good news preached to them. Women and children will have a place of value and honor. The blind will see, the deaf hear, the rich will be sent away empty-handed. And the hungry will be filled with good things. The last shall be first, and the greatest leader will be the humblest servant. The meek, not the powerful, will inherit the earth. The king shall seek out and save the lost. And a little child shall lead.
Well, back again. There you have it. What does this mean for us in COVID 2020? The little child leading in 1996 is now a medical specialist. Others are mothers, fathers, teachers, parents, artists, movers and shakers, forging their way through the messy business of life and kingdom building. Many of the elders have passed on, absent from the body, present with the Lord, which is far better. Their legacy lingers in the memory of many of us. But as I said, what does it mean for us today? Those words about the kingdom are definitely challenging, disturbing. For some, some of us, even controversial. Because our view of the kingdom is perhaps different, limited to and identified with the church or with our personal salvation. Or perhaps we think of the kingdom as only coming in the future. And the idea of the kingdom coming on earth is not our understanding. If that is the case, the very words of Jesus, Jesus' prayer, challenge that view fundamentally. We all need to be very open to reconsider our understanding of the kingdom when faced with the plain words of Scripture and of Jesus. We, all of us, must reconcile recognize that we do not come to the scriptures as a clean slate. We come with the colors of our grid and our personal history, our personal history of Christian thinking, uh, Christian teaching, our cultural shaping. We bring all of that as we come to scripture. I'm not putting a value on it. I'm not saying it's a negative thing or even wrong. It's just a fact. And we all need to consider and reconsider and open ourselves up again to the plain words of Jesus, however challenging, however uncomfortable, however controversial. So here's the challenge today. Everything, whatever it is, whenever it was created, wherever it is, has existed and has been created and sustained by Jesus, the Lord, the Saviour, the King. And all of that is encompassed within his kingdom work. Jesus' salvation work is not simply a personal event and transaction. Neither is it even a personal transaction with relational and social consequences. Salvation, in fact, is cosmic in scope. It is that big. Note the Apostle's words, the Apostle Paul's words in uh, Colossians chapter 1. Speaking of Jesus, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones, rulers, powers, authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all of his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile all things, all things, whether things on earth or in heaven, making peace through the blood of the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you wholly in his sight without blemish and free from accusation, and so on. What it's saying, what Paul is saying, is that salvation 
The sacrifice of the cross is not just about you and me, but about reconciling all things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, people, principalities, everything to their proper place and relationship with God. Note the movement in the saga of salvation in Paul's inspired writing. From the cosmic, to the powers, to the creation, to the church, and then to ourselves. We have reversed the order, leading to a distorted view of the kingdom of God. So here it is. There isn't a single nook nor cranny in the universe that is outside of the scope of the kingdom of God and of God's salvation work. That's what Paul's saying. Beyond the world of humans, beyond the creation, beyond history and time, beyond the universe. Salvation is not simply a religious experience. It is Jesus. Jesus and his kingdom breaking into history breaking out everywhere rampant in creation and forever breaking into the lives of human beings, breaking us, breaking us together in community at all times, making all things new. This is the true meaning of a spiritual kingdom, a kingdom with salvation as big as the universe, as big as God. Pete Smith said last week that this topic requires a year to study. I agree, but we only have a few minutes. Much more can be said, but even in a few minutes, there's still quite a lot we can say. The kingdom encompasses eternity and time and where the two meet. History and human purpose, God's ultimate purpose and the church's mission justice and peace, suffering and power, the poor and poverty, materialism and wealth, racism and reconciliation, the uniqueness of Christ, not simply in relation to other faith systems, but especially as the unifying reality in the Godhead's universe, as the one cosmic redeemer. I think it is clear that this Pauline passage speaks eloquently and directly to that. And it is not the only passage that does this. It is not an outlier, but it represents a central statement of the kingdom of God and its purpose. So my invitation today is for a pivot, a big pivot. My salvation only makes sense if it is hitched to and driven by the agenda and intention of the kingdom of God in its vast, incomprehensible and incomparable purpose. If we detach our salvation and our personal relationship with God from the program of the kingdom of God, then our salvation becomes just another religious abstraction and our worship a morale boosting session for hard pressed believers. Very unsatisfying and very demoralizing. Now, let me encourage you instead to wake up each day with a vision of how God is working God's purpose out. Building the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. The new earth, Peter York reminds us, is coming, but the birth pangs are here now, and we are the mothers, the fathers, and the, mid and the midwives. Let me encourage you to wear the 14 revolutionary words as a mantra, stuck to your forehead, carved into your heart, and creating a passion for God's new world in the making. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The sacrifice is that far reaching and that inclusive. As part of that production 24 years ago, I wrote this rap. Here's a bit of it. It's about Jesus' triumph, his resurrection. Dead man dancing on resurrection day, rocking and rolling the stone away. For the scribes and the priests and the Pharisee, for the halt and the lame and, the, and those who had no eyes to see, for the black and the white and the enemy, and for those who had the dreaded curse of leprosy. He was dancing. He just kept on dancing. Dead man dancing on resurrection day, rocking and rolling the stone away. Or we could move to another po bit of poetry, a bit of poetry, the vision, explaining the vision of the new earth, which in inspires us all to pull that reality back into our pr present place and time. Heaven's home is an open door with many rooms to welcome the poor from every tribe and every tongue and every nation and every town. From the river of life in the city of God flows a living flood that heals the world and every pilgrim shall see his face and every saint who has run the race. We shall pound the swords into plowshares, make pruning hooks from the spears. Each will recline in the shade of his vine or her vine, living in peace till the end of time. No more war, no more tears, no more hunger, no more fear, no more death, no more pain, no more drought, no more rain. And every creature in earth, sea and sky, sing your praises to God on high. Worthy the lamb that was slain for the kingdom of priests who reign. Yes, every king, every pilgrim shall see his face. Every saint who has run the race. Every tribe and every tongue and every nation from every town. What a vision. We can pull it back to the present and build that community now and say amazing things about the God of the kingdom. And with this inspiration, we place our bodies, a living sacrifice, as Jesus did, to defeat the principalities and powers and expose their illusory power. What a program. What an enterprise. What an inspiration to wake up to each day. I'll be with you folks.
As we walk in the shadows In the darkness of death There is a great light shining We're on our way We're on our way Nation of peace with nation Bombs and tanks melted down Bridges and houses rebuilt We're on our way We're on our way I can't wait to be with you Everything will be renewed There'll be work and lots to do When we're picking daisies When we're picking daisies In the new In the new In the new Greatest banquet, best of meats, finest wine. All who would come are welcome. We're on our way, we're on our way. Look at how nature joins. Bursting forth now in bloom. Creation shouts her glory. We're on our way, we're on our way. I can't wait to be with you Everything will be renewed There'll be work and lots to do When we're picking daisies When we're picking daisies In the new In the new In the new Fears and blind eyes only See the lame leap for joy Freedom for all the prisoners We're on our way, we're on our way Heaven and earth meet you Every tear wiped away God is at home among us We're on our way, we're on our way can't wait to be with you Everything will be renewed There'll be work and lots to do When we're picking daisies When we're picking daisies In the new In the new In the new In the new Thank you everyone who shared in the service today. We are so blessed by everyone who contributes each week and particularly those that put this service together. Um, they do a wonderful job. We do look forward to a time when we can be together in worship and praise. I know I'm looking forward to that. Uh, won't it be a joyous celebration and there'll be so much to catch up on. Please stay in touch. If you need to talk to one of the team, then give the office a call, leave a message or email the office. We look forward to hearing from you. Let me leave you with this. The love of God be the passion in your heart. The joy of God be your strength when times are hard. The presence of God, a peace that overflows. The word of God, a seed that you might sow. Amen. Have a wonderful week. See you soon.